Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have here with us uh, Rohit Azad. He's a faculty from JNU economics subject. Uh, we're going to discuss about the recent GDP figures that have come out. Hello, Rohit. Welcome Thank to News Click. Rohit, the uh, you know uh, past one week everybody has been talking about the GDP figures. India seems to have shown a very impressive GDP growth in t uh, considering the global scenario. I think it's about 6.8 percent. So, what do you think of it? Is it is it that impressive? Is, eco is our economy doing that well that we have such a high growth? I think there has been an issue about methodology. I mean, there is a discussion about yes, India seems to be doing the seems to be the fastest growing economy in the world if we go by these GDP figures. At the same time, there have been quite a few doubts which have been raised by economists, by statisticians, past stati uh, statisticians. And uh, those doubts are uh, important to be considered before we come to a conclusion that this 6.8, actually 6.8. Uh, if I can give an analogy uh, in terms of what this change has been, uh, let's say if we were to look at uh, uh, an apple orchard, uh, and you had about 10,000 trees in that. And since you can't count apples for all those 10,000 trees, you do a sample of that 10,000 trees. And let's say you do 1,000 and the number of apples you have in that 1,000, you multiply it by 10, which gives you the apple production of that orchard. What has changed in this, uh, between the methodology which was there, the 2004-5 to 2011-12, is that they have, change the number of trees, let's say. So instead of doing 1,000, they have increased it. And secondly, they are valuing uh, Apple not just in terms of its volume, but also in terms of its quality. And that's the change that, now on the face of it, it seems like it's perfectly fine. I mean, if you're taking the quality of apples into account, that's far better than just looking at the value in some abstract sense. But that only makes sense if both your sample is done well, and actually you're measuring the apple's quality better. Now, that's where the doubts have, uh, have come up, if I can elaborate on that. Um, people have said multiple things uh, on that. The most important being that uh, the data which has now been used, so there is a change in database. Earlier it used to be the RBI database for the corporate sector. And the reason why one is picking the corporate sector because that's the one which has uh, seen the jump between these two series. Now you're using the Ministry of Corporate Affairs uh, database. The doubts which have come up on that is that even though the data set is bigger, there are serious issues of reporting of data in that. To give you one concrete example of that, uh, NSSO picked up certain firms from uh, that sample to study the services sector. And they found that one third of that data set was essentially companies which didn't exist or were not uh, out of coverage and all of that. Now, how reliable would that be if you have a sample of which <coughs> one, th Sorry. yeah, uh, 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 a sample of which one third is uh, companies such as these? So that's one immediate problem that uh, arises and hence it's not only about increasing the sample size itself, it is the quality of the sample also that matters uh, in my mind and that's an important consideration I would keep in mind. So you think that this 6.8 GDP that government is showing to us is not actually, is, could be much lower? Perhaps, perhaps, because uh, as I said, one was sample and then what they, uh, I mean, technically called the blowing up term. So you have a sample and then you obviously multiply it by something to get at the overall figure because you don't have the total uh, population uh, figures in that sense. Uh, now, whether that blowing up factor is the current correct one or not, apart from the fact that the basic sample itself is problematic, but what about the blowing up factor? Is that exaggerated? If it is, then obviously it's possible that for both these reasons, the GDP figures could be a bit inflated, uh, perhaps. Yeah, because uh, if you actually look at the GDP figures, which is 6.8, and the recent unemployment figures, which they say that has been the highest since 40, 45 years, so there doesn't seem to be a reconciliation, like if the GDP is high, how come there's such a high unem unemployment at one level? Absolutely, and that's uh, that's one. Then if you look at other, you know, I mean, fair enough that there is a change in methodology, so that could bring about a change in terms of numbers. But then it should also, there are certain things which have not changed. For example, bank credit uh, data. 
it stays the same. The amount of loans they have given to the corporate sector, household sector, is still based on the same methodology. That hasn't changed. Now, if there has been a higher growth, that should also seen a jump. What you find is the exact opposite. Uh, the corporate sector loans have actually, in terms of the rise, has actually fallen the rate of growth. Then one could turn around and say that, okay, probably it's not credit financed. It could be, let's say, retained earnings of the corporation and their own profits they are reinvesting. But then that should show up in terms of the investment data, that investment GDP ratio has gone up. That also doesn't show. Then one could turn around and say, fair enough, it's not domestic factors, but international factors which have driven this growth. That also doesn't show that export GDP ratio is not rising, nor is the case that domestic consumption as a proportion of GDP is any higher than what it was earlier. So, there are genuine doubts. Now, one could say that you could have uh, probably taken a, a final position if you were in a position to do this assessment yourself. And that's where another component that there is lack of transparency. I mean, one cannot check the MCA database because it's not available, unlike what used to be the case with the RBI database earlier. Uh, let us say because we don't have choice, because we, uh, we don't like own the government statistical machinery, uh, if, we t if we decided to take the government's uh, GDP data on face value, so if you look at 2018-19 data, so the quarterly, the even even its own data, government's own data shows the quarterly the GDP growth has gone down. I think it is, it's about eight eight percent in the first quarter, and by the fourth quarter it has fallen to five percent, five point eight percent. So do you think there is somehow there is there is a, like a deceleration that's happening in the economy? I, I think that within series, uh, the comparison would not be so unfair because basically it's like, you. I mean, if I can go back to the Apple example, that you've looked at the quality of the Apple and if that methodology of finding out the quality remains the same, which is the new series, then comparing the two would not be a problem, should not be a problem. Uh, although there can be problems arising there itself because if the way you're measuring within the series itself changes over a period of time, then there is a problem. But let's say that that's not happening. You fixed it, you know how you're measuring the quality of the apple and that stays constant all through this phase when you're, uh, in which case the rates of growth would not uh, be problematic. I mean, it might be the case that it is inflated, but if you compare across two periods within that, it should be fairly, uh, I mean, technically speaking, should not be a problem. So in that sense, obviously, there could have been a deceleration in uh, the growth rate and it matches up with uh, index of industrial production, credit figures and all of that. So perhaps, yeah, there has been a decline, but I think the the conflict or the controversy arose not merely in terms of looking at it within the series. It arose in a different context when they started claiming that the NDA or the Modi government has done much better than the UPA government, although all the indices of the UPA one were completely the opposite. Even if we take the, you know, their back series uh, into account, uh, credit GDP, as I said, and the other uh, figures, if you look at, they were far better compared to what you had during the last government. So then there was a discrepancy there. And the controversy was so much more because the same government came up with two different back series. One which was under uh, uh, N. Bhanumurthy from NIPFP, in, uh, uh, him being the, the in charge of that uh, committee, uh, which brought out figures which gave UPA even higher rates of growth. Within a day, that data disappeared. I mean, it was not on the MOSPI website anymore. And then came the actual figures which we now have, where the UPA figures have gone down dramatically. Uh, and it shows uh, up uh, where uh, Niti Aayog is sitting and looking at overseeing the data, which is not what Niti Aayog's uh, job was. It should be, statistics should be independent of any political intervention from the government. Otherwise, it creates doubts as they have. And renowned economists have questioned uh, these figures. In the so finally, Rohit, if we look at government's own data, which is showing that within 2018-19, uh, within there, there has been a deceleration over the quarters. And also, if we put it together with the fact that there is high unemployment, again, by government's own data. So what, is, what should be done now? What, is, what, uh, what should any government do right now? 
No, about unemployment, if I can just yes. make a small point that the NSSO data which has now been released is, is still not for this year. I mean, it's not counting 2018, uh, the last figures. So that may not be a good uh, comparison to make. But at least they are acknowledging that during their uh, five years, the last five years, uh, the unemployment rates were far higher. At least that much they are acknowledging, although it happened all post-election. The same data could have been released pre-election as well. But uh, coming uh, back to this point in terms of what can be done, I think there has to be a fundamental change in which how you look at uh, uh, policy. Uh, unfortunately, the fixation of this government and it to some extent was also true about the UPA. This fixation with fiscal deficit is something which has to go. Why do I say that? Because that's one source. If let's say private corporate investment is falling as a proportion, consumption is not picking up because the incomes, unemployment is an issue, then in incomes are not getting generated. Then how do you push the economy? There has to be some lever through which you inject uh, some fresh demand in the economy. And fiscal policy is one such thing. Now, if you're fixated on keeping the fiscal deficit at a particular level, then you don't have that lever anymore because that is then dependent on the current output itself. If you say that only 3% of your current output is what you can spend, extra spend, then if the output is low, then the expenditure would also be low. So unless they break out of that mindset, which is this fixation on fiscal deficit through the FRBM, uh, I think it would be difficult to make a recovery. On top of that, you have uh, the, the monetary policy or, or let's say the RBI, which is fixated on inflation targeting, the exact opposite that they should be worried about at the moment, which will increase the interest rate. So from both the side of uh, government not intervening directly and then the corporate sector or the household, which could have increased their, let's say, loans or demand for different goods, if the interest rates go up, then that also becomes difficult for them. So I think it's the, it's uh, what the government is doing at the moment is the exact opposite of what it should be doing. But then if you're, if you have only one kind of, you know, if, uh, uh, if your vision itself is uh, skewed, then this is what you end up with. So earlier you have said that, uh there is a, a problem in comparison between the se previous series and the present series. So what is the exact problem? So the exact problem as uh, first was that when they came up with this new methodology, they did not calculate the back series, which is not normally how you bring new series. You always do. As soon as you introduce a new methodology, you always create a back series of that while you produce that data. This was not done, it was only done for two years. And if we look at those two years, it's quite uh, drastic. If I can just quote you uh, a figure, uh, between the two series, uh, if you look at particularly manufacturing, which is where the huge jump takes place, uh, the rate of growth, uh, let's say what, uh, I mean, rate of growth in 2012-13 for the old series was 1.1%. The same rate of growth becomes 5 percentage points higher, 6.1% uh, with the new series. Similarly, 2013-14, it was in the negative, minus 0.7%. Again, it goes up by almost 5% to 5.3%. Now, this seems ridiculous. I mean, it seems difficult. I mean, even if not ridiculous, seems difficult to digest. Then came the question, okay, fair enough, uh, two years may be problematic. So you at least now produce the back series, which is what they did in terms of calculating the back series. The biggest problem with the back series was, apart from the fact that there were two different estimates which came up, they have calculated the back series based on this data set, which only goes back to 2009-10. How have they calculated the years prior to that? They have used the other database, the RBI database for that. Now, how do you make that comparison then? Then it is as good as the earlier series. If it is so, then how come the figures are different for that series? And what exactly has happened there? It looks like a black box uh, and nobody knows about it because the uh, government is not willing to share it publicly, openly, so that it can be held accountable to the researchers or public at large. So I think that is the core of the doubt even in terms of the comparison between the two series. So from the figures you've quoted, you said that for 2014, 13-14, uh, from negative to it went up by 5%. So 
So if we actually deduct 5% now, it could be just 1.8% of growth. No, so this is 5% of manufacturing alone. So if you look at it in terms of weightage, obviously it will be far lower. And that is for that particular year, yeah. So if this thing continues, perhaps yes, and manufacturing let's say is 30% or whatever that is, then 30% of that 5%, so at least, yeah, yeah, but true. Thank you, Rohit. We hope to see you again. Thank you, Shurna. Thanks for having me here. Thank you for watching NewsClick.